What if I told you that you finally have an excuse for absolute mess in your apartment, dormitory room or your office? What if I told you that you can finally explain to your parents, partners or uh, your roommates that it's not really your fault and it all has to do with the universe and to give them some scientific explanation? But this is much more than a simple scientific explanation and includes not only specific fields of physics and mathematics, but also famous minimalist Marie Kondo ordering books in the library and why mess can actually be beneficial to our lives. My name is Vladis Vradak, I'm writer and mathematician and this is Fabric of Life, a show where we try to fuse art and science to answer the world's most compelling questions. From great writers to forgotten paintings, from breakthrough science to secret places. We use all the knowledge. Let me take you on an adventure. Before we jump into this really interesting and fascinating scientific adventure, let me remind you to subscribe to this channel. Every week I'm taking you on an amazing adventure. Next week I'm going to take you to Cuba to see how Hemingway, one of the greatest writers who ever lived, actually spent his last seven days there. The story is a little bit more mysterious and tragic than one might expect. And now that we're staying a little bit more at home, we couldn't help but wonder where all this mess comes from. Some of us use our breaks in home office routine to order a little bit around, but as we turn our backs, somehow the mess and the clutter return. But what if I told you that it's not you or any of your household members that is actually responsible for this mess? What if I told you that it's God? God? Who wrote this? I mean universe. Many scientists claim that uh, mess in our homes uh, can be seen as analogous to the second law of thermodynamics. Uh, yes, that one about entropy, uh, which is uh, basically the simple measure of disorder in our system and it states that uh, that disorder is always increasing in a closed system. Confused? Let me explain. In thermodynamics, we can measure this chaos or disorder using a property called entropy. The higher the entropy, the more disorder we have. For instance, if you add cream to your coffee, you'll always get an even mix of two. This is the most disordered state. And because entropy can never decrease, your coffee can never spontaneously unmix itself. This is why our universe states that disorder is always increasing. Theory of entropy also states that at some far point in the time, all our energy would be evenly spread through our universe like a butter on the bread. And that would mean a cooling down of our solar system and eventually end of our lives. But this is too far away and maybe a topic for one more complete new video. In another example, entropy states that oxygen molecules are chaotically distributed all over your bedroom, not cramming into one corner, leaving you to suffocate in the vacuum during the night. But luckily, the motion of air molecules is governed by the countless random collisions and movements, a never-ending molecular tornado of activity. These limitless motions will essentially always leave the air in disorganized, messy state, evenly spread through the room, similar to the mess we create. And this is the point where probability theory and combinatorics, two really special fields of mathematics, come in. Let's say you have, for example, three books. One, two, Three. Well, those three books are all written by me, but you don't necessarily need to have three books written by me. This is just an example. So the way we would order them into a library is alphabetically. So there's only one way for them to be ordered in the library, and this is this. But with three books, there are actually six different ways uh, to be ordered and one of them is obviously correct and all the five others are incorrect like for example light blue dark blue and then you know uh, uh, brown one and then you know like for example this or uh, for example uh, this 
Yeah, actually, let me do a simple animation for you. With the help of combinatorics, we can determine in how many ways we can order three different items, in this case three different books. That is called number of permutations and it can be easily calculated for three books that is three factorial equals six total combinations. Now, for 10 different items, let's say 10 different books, we have 10 factorial ways they can be ordered that equals to exactly 3,628,800 ways for them to be ordered. If we assume that there is only one way for them to be in a perfect order, that gives us really small probability that I'm going to write here. Without energy invested, there is small chance that this will happen. This is called combinatorical explosion. So it's no surprise that they're witnessing meteoric rise of minimalist trends around the globe that are propelled superstars as Japanese tiding expert Marie Kondo, who says we should only keep things that spark joy for us. Mathematics states that if we own fewer things, surely there are combinatorically fewer ways to arrange them. Until recently, our closets and storage spaces expand in the same way our universe expands. The entropy of our life expanded as well, making us miserable in the process. We need to recalibrate and focus on the things that actually fulfill us. Combinatorics can be used in many ways to declutter our life. For example, we are under constant social pressure to always have a fresh and inventive clothes. We often say, you know, I cannot be seen in the same clothes every Monday. And mathematics can help us with that. Let's try to simplify a little bit by saying uh, that uh, every combination of our clothes is consists of, of the top, uh, bottom and our shoes. Combinatorics states that we have seven different choices of each. We will cover seven times seven times seven equals 343 combinations. Forget the weekends, you're set up for the whole year of combining different outfits, not repeating even one. Seven pairs of shoes are too much for you? I agree, add a hat or a tie. Voila! We have overwhelming scientific proof that uh, too much choice actually paralyzes people. You know when you try to go out on a date and you open your closet and there's so many things there that you actually get a panic attack. Uh, that means that not only decluttering our lives, but also stopping us from buying more will help us uh, not only with our well-being, but also with our economy and definitely will help our planet. For the rest of the stuff you cannot get rid of, it's fine. In a study in the September issue of Psychological Science, Kathleen Voss of University of Minnesota found that working in a tidy room encourages people to do socially responsible, normatively good things like eat healthfully and give to charity. But working in a messy room seems to help them try new things and come up with creative ideas. So it's no surprise that we cannot imagine most of our famous writers and scientists out of their chaotic environments. Creative people find it hard to let something go. They're much more attached to the memories that can be valuable fabric in creating their new book or scientific work one day. Needless to say, this is definitely not invitation to be lazy or untidy or refuse to clean up your mess when your partner or mom asks you to. Especially, you don't need to show them this video. This is more of a scientific explanation why we shouldn't worry that much about our personal chaos. After all, there is a hidden creative beauty behind all that mess. In the end, both scientists and Marie Kondo are right. In order to be more happy and productive, we should definitely try to own less stuff. I hope you liked our last adventure after Cuba. I will take you to Germany and Italy to discover why one city shouldn't be on the maps, to question the reality and to investigate how one composer united Italy. Until then, stay tuned and curious and don't forget, libraries still exist. <laughs>